In March of 2022, astronomers announced the discovery of the farthest known star through images captured by the Hubble Space Telescope. They named it Arendelle, which in Old English means morning star. However, due to technical limitations, Hubble could only glimpse its red glow. Now, the near-infrared camera, or NIRCAM, of the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, and its near-spec spectrograph have observed the same star, revealing further details about it. And as a result, Arendelle will become the most ancient star ever discovered and observed by humans. With its age of 12.9 billion years, Arendelle may serve as the best evidence against the Big Bang Theory. Arendelle WHL0137-L6 The Ancient and Mighty Star Arendelle is the earliest and most distant star discovered to date. It is located approximately 28 billion light years away from Earth. Arendelle is nearly twice as far as the previous record holder, Icarus, Max J1149 Lens Star 1. Arendelle lies within the Cetus constellation. It was discovered using the Hubble Space Telescope through gravitational lensing. This discovery was reported on March the 20th of 2022. Hubble was able to detect Arendelle because the star's light was magnified by the massive galaxy cluster WHL 0137-08, situated between us and the star. This colossal galaxy cluster acts like a magnifying glass amplifying the star's light from 1,000 to 40,000 times. The host galaxy of Arendelle, classified as WHL0137-ZD1, is nicknamed the Sunburst Arc because gravitational lensing has stretched its light into a long, slender crescent shape. The two red dots seen on either side of WHL0137 lens star are both images of the same star whose light has been bent and split into two separate reflections. This cluster is estimated to be at least 10 million years old. It is gravitationally bound and likely still exists. It provides us with a glimpse of what globular star clusters in the Milky Way might have looked like as they formed shortly after the Big Bang. Arendelle has a redshift of 6.2. The light detected from the star was emitted only 900 million years after the Big Bang and reached Earth 12.9 billion years later. However, the co-moving distance, accounting for the expansion of the universe over the time since the light was emitted, is currently 28 billion light years. When the light from Arendelle was emitted, the star was only about 4 billion light years away from what would later become the Milky Way galaxy. As the universe expanded over the course of 12.9 billion years for the light to reach Earth, the star is now located about 28 billion light years away from us. The previous record holder for the farthest single star, Icarus, Max J1149 Lens Star 1, had a co-moving distance of 14.4 billion light years with a redshift of 1.49. Its light was emitted about 9.34 billion years ago roughly 4.4 billion years after the Big Bang. The discovery of Arendelle represents a significant leap back in time compared to the previous record for a single star, discovered by the Hubble telescope in 2018. Icarus existed when the universe was about 4 billion years old, which is approximately 30% of its current age, at a time referred to by astronomers as redshift 1.5. Astronomers use the term redshift because as the universe expands, light from distant objects is stretched or shifted to longer, redder wavelengths as it travels back to us. The newly discovered star is so far away that its light took 12.9 billion years to reach Earth, making it appear to us as if the universe were only 7% of its current age at a redshift of 6.2. The smallest objects seen at such extreme distances before were star clusters located within primordial galaxies. Classification of Arendelle's stellar type Arendelle is a hot, 
blue B-type star with a mass ranging from 50 to 100 times that of the Sun and a minimum surface temperature of 20,000 Kelvin. Furthermore, its characteristics are uncertain. Stars of such high mass do not live long. They rapidly consume their hydrogen fuel supply and evolve off the main sequence to become supergiants. Arendelle has the potential to disappear as a supernova just a few million years after its formation. The fact that Arendelle belongs to the B-type star category in the morgan keenan spectral classification indicates that it is indeed a gaseous star. B-type stars are very luminous, with Rigel in the Orion constellation being a prominent blue supergiant of the B-type. Their spectral display neutral helium lines and moderately strong hydrogen lines. Due to their strong activity, O and B type stars have relatively short lifespans. They do not stray far from the regions where they were born, as there isn't enough time for that. Consequently, they tend to form associations known as OB associations, which are associated with giant molecular clouds. The Orion OB1 association is one such spiral arm branch in our galaxy. Brighter stars would make the spiral arm more prominent, but there aren't many stars there, and contains the entire Orion constellation. There is a small possibility that Arendelle belongs to Population 3. If it is a second generation star, its light characteristics would indeed show different elements. Population 3 stars are a hypothetical group of extremely massive, hot, and luminous stars that existed when the universe was very young. These stars are believed to be nearly metal-free, primarily composed of pristine hydrogen and helium. They are thought to have initiated the production of heavier chemical elements necessary for planet formation. The earliest generations of stars formed approximately 100 million years after the Big Bang meaning Arendelle would precede one or two generations of stars. Heavier elements did not exist until the first of these stars disappeared as supernova. The discovery of the first generation of stars is one of the most significant goals of the James Webb Space Telescope. The sensitivity of the JWST allows for a more detailed analysis of Arendelle's spectrum and the detection of any companion stars. The data collected by it will enable scientists to constrain the mass, radius, temperature, and age of Arendelle, and confirm whether it is indeed a star. Astronomers expect that this star will continue to amplify for many years to come. Observations with the JWST will provide them with a clear view of Arendelle, and much more data to determine its characteristics. If astronomers discover that Arendelle is indeed composed only of pristine hydrogen and helium, this would be the first discovery of a Population 3 star. Images Analyzing Ancient Stars from the Webb's Lens From the James Webb Space Telescope's near-infrared camera, or again near-cam, scientists predict that Arendelle is a massive, hot, type B star, twice as massive and a million times brighter than the Sun. Similar to the Hubble, the web can detect Arendelle through gravitational lensing. Although other features of the star's host galaxy are lensed multiple times, Arendelle is seen as a single bright point. The light we see from Arendelle was first emitted about 900 million years after the Big Bang. The gravitational lensing reveals that it is magnifying Arendelle by a factor of 4,000. While researchers don't expect the JWST to reveal any companions, the spectrum of Arendelle may indicate the presence of a cooler, redder companion. However, they are very close together and seen at a very distant location, about 13 billion light years away, making it challenging to distinguish them separately. The James Webb Space Telescope is revealing other new details in the Sunrise Arc galaxy including nurseries of young stars and older clusters, some of which are only 10 light years across. The region where new stars are forming is believed to be less than 5 million years old. It appears as a streak in both Hubble and James Webb space images. Arendelle is not the only distant star that Webb has studied. In 2023, the James Webb Space Telescope 
discovered the first isolated red giant star at a distance greater than one billion light years from Earth. Nicknamed Qualier, from Quenchua, meaning star, this red giant star is located in the El Gordo Galaxy Cluster, which is over seven billion light years away, in the Phoenix constellation. Qualier was observed three billion years after the Big Bang. At that time, Qualier was a colossal red giant that had traveled through space for 10.7 billion years to reach Earth. According to Sinews, red giant stars are the evolved descendants of larger stars, with initial masses ranging from 7 to 40 times the mass of the Sun. They are the largest in terms of radius among all known types of stars, even though they are not the most massive stars, as they have puffed up over time. That's correct. Stars, including our Sun, go through a life cycle that involves different stages. Towards the end of their lives, many stars, like our Sun, will expand into red giants, significantly increasing in size compared to their original state. After a while, red giants will end their relatively short-lived existence by collapsing into white dwarf stars. Qualier may have collapsed and dissipated into space as a white dwarf star billions of years ago. However, due to its extreme distance, the Golden Age images from 10.7 billion years ago have taken that long to reach Earth's telescopes. In other words, we are observing the ghost of an object that crossed over from the early days of the universe. It's fascinating to think about how the color and characteristics of stars can change depending on their temperature and age. Qualier, as a red supergiant, has a relatively cool surface temperature compared to stars like the Sun, and this results in it emitting a redder light. In space, objects that are hotter tend to emit bluer light, while cooler objects gradually shift towards white, yellow, orange, and the coolest end, red. The objects located about 33 to 49 light years away from Qualier, appearing bluer and less distinct, may indeed be a region where stars are forming. Given their distance of 10.7 billion light years, these spectacular objects came into existence when the universe was just 3.1 billion years old. Today we are also finding their ancestors, like Arendelle, from a distance of 12.9 billion years. This exploration of the universe's history through distant objects is truly remarkable. The universe, 28 billion years old. Since James Webb turned its gaze towards the farthest objects in the universe, the monster near the dawn of cosmic history, we have had to confront many challenges to establish theories of space-time physics. Stars like Arendelle have shown that the starting point could be nearly double the current estimate of 13.7 billion years. If studies of the reionization era and the first stars remain unchanged, the Big Bang could be pushed back indefinitely. Does the universe truly have its origins in the Big Bang? That remains the most debated question. Arendelle was serendipitously discovered when the galaxy cluster WHL 013-08 happened to align in a straight line with Earth and Arendelle. Thus, a naturally massive gravitational lens magnified the star's light by thousands of times. Gravitational lensing allows scientists from the Center for Cosmic Dawn at the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen and the National Space Institute, or DTU Space, in Denmark to observe objects at great distances, to the point where detecting galaxies can be extremely challenging. Einstein's theory of relativity suggests that all objects with mass can bend space-time. When light travels near massive objects, it follows the curved space-time and changes direction. If a massive object happens to be between Earth and a distant light source, it can detect and gravitationally magnify the light toward Earth, acting like a powerful light amplifier. As of the current time, most of the farthest stars have been observed through this fascinating astronomical phenomenon. With humanity's current technology, studying stars without the assistance of space-based observations remains science fiction. In the past, when light from the Hubble could only take humanity to the edge of history, 
Today, the James Webb Space Telescope is striving to explore that history. The existence of stars like Arendel raises doubts about the very theory of stellar evolution that itself has been posited. The universe might be much older than we imagine. Are Big Bang images not real? Since its official operation in July, the James Webb Space Telescope has generated impressive images of the universe. For the first time, scientists can detect and analyze to create images of galaxies and ancient distant stars. The images returned by the James Webb Space Telescope capture many extremely small, smooth and old galaxies. It's not difficult to see that this is completely contradictory to the Big Bang Theory. Let's start with the extremely small detail. The universe is continually expanding, creating virtual images. With this effect, we could see galaxies, or objects, in the expanding universe not getting smaller as they move further away. Their size, when observed, might even appear larger as they pass through certain points in the universe due to the effects of light. Meanwhile, images taken by the James Webb Space Telescope show galaxies getting smaller as they move further away. Even galaxies that are brighter and more massive than the Milky Way appear smaller by two to three times compared to the same image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Consequently, the redshift of these galaxies is also observed to be two to three times higher than the previous observations. This is not consistent with an expanding universe. Ricardo Scarpa had previously predicted a similar scenario in a non-expanding universe. In 2014, scientists shared results based on the Hubble Space Telescope showing galaxies with redshifts up to five, which aligned with the non-expanding universe hypothesis. With the James Webb, the consistent redshift has increased to 12. In other words, the distant galaxies in James Webb's images have sizes equivalent to galaxies in our neighborhood, assuming a non-expanding universe and redshift being directly proportional to distance. However, according to the Big Bang theory of an expanding universe, these distant galaxies must indeed be very small to fit the effect of virtual imaging. Take, for example, the case of GHZ2, a galaxy observed to be brighter than the Milky Way, but with a radius of only 300 light years, smaller than the Milky Way's radius by 150 times. If it's that bright, the surface brightness of a galaxy on a unit area would be 600 times brighter than the brightest galaxies in the universe, and its density would be tens of thousands of times higher than other galaxies. As far back as Hubble's time, scientists have proposed the hypothesis of super tiny dense galaxies formed when one galaxy collides with another, creating chaotic structures. However, in the images from the James Webb Space Telescope, these super tiny galaxies have a very clean disk-like appearance and a neat spiral shape similar to modern-day galaxies. In the article Panic, data shows that these smooth spiral galaxies are more than 10 times more prevalent than theory predicts. This would completely disrupt previous hypotheses about galaxy mergers. With too few or non-existent galaxy mergers, there would be no possibility for tiny galaxies to grow hundreds of times larger. In that case, the predicted effect of virtual imaging from the expanding universe theory would not exist, implying no expanding universe or no Big Bang. James Webb uses multiple filters to collect data from infrared wavelengths and then translates it into colors. From this, scientists can estimate the age of stars and galaxies. Young, hot stars appear blue, while cooler, older stars appear yellow or red. According to the Big Bang Theory, the farthest galaxies in James Webb's images occurred approximately 400 to 500 million years after the explosion. However, some galaxies host stellar populations over a billion years old. Their existence is evidence that the Big Bang did not happen. If the Big Bang Theory were correct, scientists expected James Webb to progressively detect fewer galaxies ultimately none, when observing at the farthest distances. However, a paper published in the journal Nature demonstrates that galaxies with masses similar to the Milky Way are common, 
even within a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The analysis claims that James Webb images show the number of galaxies with high redshifts to be over 10 times higher than the hypothesis. There's no way for galaxies of such size to form within a short period, and once again, the Big Bang is not supported in this case. In early July, an article was posted summarizing analyses of the chemical composition of galaxies. Based on the published data, the Big Bang theory made 16 incorrect predictions, with only one key detail being accurate, the abundance of deuterium, a hydrogen isotope. Conclusion You may wonder why we read so little about the errors of the Big Bang theory in major media outlets. Well, the answer is that anyone questioning the Big Bang is often deemed foolish and out of touch with their field of expertise. Funding for astrophysics comes from a handful of government organizations, controlled by a few committees dominated by Big Bang theorists who have spent their lifetimes building the theory. Publicly critiquing the Big Bang does not have such substantial backing. If published at all, such critiques are often labeled as fringe and not in line with the mainstream of astrophysical science. Currently, it is nearly impossible to publish research criticizing the Big Bang theory in astronomy journals. Such censorship is counterproductive to scientific progress. We call upon theoretical Big Bang scientists to engage in open debates about the Big Bang theory based on new evidence found to date. Just like in any field, to advance astrophysics, open discourse needs to occur in scientific journals and mainstream media. Thank you for joining us today in this new exploration. We wish you a good day. See you in the next video.